This video is going to be covering some of the additional options in GitHub that you might not be using for your Rails projects, but that I highly recommend using for the sake of your own sanity. So a lot of people are familiar with issues. You come in here, you say something's broken, you describe your problem, probably not well, not a very good description, and then you submit your issue. So I'll come over to my console. I'll do a git checkout dash B, uh, call this new branch. And then I'll do a touch for example.txt. And then I'll do a git add dot git commit dash M example, git push. And then it'll ask me to push up this branch. So I'll just copy this line of text, hit enter, and that'll push it up. So you push that up, this is issue number 17. So you come over to your pull requests, you do a compare and pull request and you say example. Uh, and then maybe in the body you say this addresses number 17. Once you create the pull request, you can come over to your issues again, something's broken. And you can see here it was mentioned in this pull request. So you come into your pull request then, you say, yeah, this looks good to me. So you confirm the merge, it's been successfully merged. Then you come over to your issue and you can see here it was merged. So now you say, close this issue uh, as completed, whatever. So that is just one example of your workflow here with your issues and your pull requests. These are pretty standard things you'll probably end up doing a lot. Now, in terms of your actions, this is very helpful and we've covered this before on the channel. I have a link to the video in the video description that covered the GitHub actions for uh, Ruby on Rails. But essentially you create a uh, GitHub Actions file. This file then does all of the stuff you would need it to do whenever you push up some code to a branch or you do a pull request. So maybe you need to run your Rails tests. This will run your Rails tests. Maybe you need to lint your code. It'll do the linting. Maybe you want to run a security gem that does like static code analysis for security risks. You can do that in here as well. So it'll do all of those things for you automatically. And then depending on if it passes or fails, you'll get a little check mark and a really annoying email notification telling you that your tests failed or passed. So I probably even have an example here. If I come over to one of my other repositories with tests failing, check the React wish list. Yeah, so the React wish list here, you can see uh, passing tests, then here something broke probably an issue with the bundle install. Looks like I changed Ruby version. So then my tests started failing until eventually I pushed up a fix for it right here. And then my tests went back to passing. So this is just a good way to check. Oh, right here, I changed my Ruby version, which caused this to break. So I probably need to fix that. So actions are really helpful for a wide variety of things like that but that's not the entirety of what you're doing as a software developer, of course. So you also have your GitHub projects. These you can sort of think as like a uh, Jira board maybe, where you create a new project. We'll just call this the blog project. Uh, give it a description. You can create the project. It allows you to add columns. We can do a to-do column here, move issues here and whatever. We'll just check all of these things. We'll call this to-do, create the column. You now have one column in here. We'll do another one in progress. We'll give it a preset. It says in progress. And then we'll just add all of these in here. Assuming GitHub wants to work, we'll just, yeah. Sure, whatever, you do that. So now you create new issues here. You click the plus button, I don't know, make tutorial. You click add as you're working on the tutorial, like I am right now, you move it to in progress and then you give it another preset where you say this is for done and this will be for closed issues, merged or closed with unmerged commits. And then after I'm done with my tutorial, I move it over to here. And this is just a very basic workflow where you might have your team creating a whole bunch of issues. You move them into in progress as you assign it out to your team. And then as they close that sprints issues, you then move them to done. This one's a bit more, um, I guess it's a bit more niche because you might not need to do this. If you're making a simple blog application, honestly, you don't need to spend all your time making these uh, to do items. It, it might be good to just 
get the practice in, but also, you know, it's one of those things where the more overhead you add, the longer the project's gonna take. Uh, some things that do end up being very helpful are like the wiki, for example. Now I'm sure you've seen these before, but you can like create a page here, uh, add your information for your wiki and then create your GitHub wiki page. Now this is really useful, highly recommend you do this. I know no one ever wants to do this, but these wiki pages are incredibly helpful. So if you're making a tool, the more documentation you add, the better. I'm currently learning how to use a Voxel plugin in Unreal Engine, which gener generates procedural terrain. Uh, and the documentation just has blank pages where it hasn't been uh, updated at all which for a $300 tool really isn't that great, right? So, you know, make sure you're on top of this because you're doing your customers a favor and that's what's gonna end up generating repeat customers for you. Now, the other thing you have is your security tab. This one, um, a bit more situational again, but it's, it never hurts to have. You can set up your security alerts. Now, before you do this, I just want you to know that Dependabot will spam you. So set up a spam filter for it because right now I'm getting probably 100 to 200 emails from this lovely tool every week. Uh, and it just goes into my Dependabot spam folder because I just can't be bothered with it. But let's say we want to set up Dependabot and the security stuff. Click set up a security policy. Click commit. <clears throat> There's your security policy. Come back over to security. Really, this one doesn't matter. Uh, it's just like, how do you report your vulnerabilities? The Dependabot Alerts is the one you want. You can come in here, click Enable on Dependabot Alerts, and then you'll get alerts every time one of your dependencies has a security issue or needs to be updated. This will happen very frequently to the point of just complete annoyance. So just make sure you're not, you know, ignoring it because it's a pain in, in the butt to deal with uh, because sometimes these can be serious. Like a few months ago, you had that one logging framework issue with, uh, what was it, Log4j, or a group of Minecraft kids found that there was a massive security issue in the logging framework that half the world uses. I probably would have ignored that one because who cares about the logger? And then suddenly you have an arbitrary code execution issue. You do wanna <laughs> stay on top of these even if the alerts are boring. It's just also fun to make fun of, you know, depend upon spamming you. I do have the uh, ability to upgrade the like non-critical ones. Uh, so you enable this and it just allows you to do your uh, non-vulnerable dependencies. So it's not going to do the stuff that could potentially cause a massive security issue or break your entire application. But if it feels like it's an easy enough thing for it to update, it'll just automatically do it. So that is nice. And the last thing you have is your uh, vulnerabilities and coding errors that you can set up with code QL. This is going to run when you do your pushes or pulls to your uh, branches. And this is very similar to the GitHub Actions, which is why it's also in the GitHub workflows. So you can see here, you can read through this, but essentially it's going to go through, check your JavaScript and your Ruby, and it'll just do the setup run through with the build and then do the analysis. And if everything is above board, it'll then tell you that everything worked out okay. So I'm actually gonna commit this one. Um, we'll just come into the code QL thing right here. We'll click on this and we should see that it's trying to run it right now. And now you can see that it passed both the JavaScript and the Ruby. If you check out your uh, analysis or what is it the post checkout repository it tells you that it creates a uh, zip file for you and here under the analysis you have the di diagnostics and the summaries where it tells you what it did so total lines of ruby code in the database 1957 total lines of user written ruby code 1957 uh, and then it says okay this seems fine to me if you ever end up with a problem, then your automatic scans for your action will find it and you'll be good to go. Now, as that was running, you can see here that Dependabot started getting to work, created these pull requests. So apparently the Nokogiri and the Rack versions are outdated. So it creates these pull requests with the release notes included, security vulnerabilities, etc., the change log, the commits. So you just come in here, you merge this, confirm merge, 
that one's done. You come over to pull requests. This is also a great way to pad your pull request numbers if you ever decide you want to uh, make your GitHub profile seem more appealing for recruiters, which is why you shouldn't look at GitHub profiles if you're trying to recruit someone because it's actually that easy to keep your uh, pull request numbers up and make it seem like you're actively contributing. Now, if we come over to security, you can see here we have some more Dependabot alerts. And this is where your email starts to get spammed. I'm already getting several notifications right now. I've gotten four emails since I started this video uh, about some of these issues. So you just come in here and you say, okay, the action pack needs to be fixed. Here's the impact and here's some workarounds for you if you decide to do that. You can come up here and you can set your reason for dismissal if you decide to go that way. But of course, as this is happening, it's also going to go through and the ones that it can do a PR for, it'll do the PR. It'll also run your code QL on those to make sure that it works and it'll gray out the pull request button as long as these things are uh, running their scans. Now, in some cases, if we exit out of here and we come over to the, uh, what is it, the Turbo Chat room, you actually have a discussions page. Uh, I don't know what enables this, but uh, it's a new feature, I guess. And what this allows is for you to do like Q&A for your GitHub projects. So here, maybe I have a question that I want to ask, new discussion, and I say, how does this app work? Um, would React be better? And then I click start discussion and then some Rails person comes along and says, no, React isn't better because I have to defend my Rails choices for whatever reason, right? Obviously not going to put that, but you get the idea. You then reply to it and this allows you to sort of have your like Stack Overflow style questions on the actual page here. But okay, that's going to do it for this video. Hopefully this was helpful and I will see you in the next tutorial.